Back in Euler's time, people were wondering what is the exact sum of this sequence where the fractions all have a numerator of 1 and the denominator are all of the perfect square. So these are the reciprocals of the perfect squares. And Euler figured out that this was converging, as they say, to about 1.65, which is exactly pi squared over 6. And the way he did this is that he already knew there's already out there a formula that's a part of calculus, uh, a way of figuring out the sign of an angle if the angle that x is given in radians. The formula is x Sorry. One minus x plus x cubed. Now nah, I forgot my formula. I think it's uh. Here we go. It's x to the first over one factorial, which is one, minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus dot dot dot. And one thing you could do is if you make x equal to pi over 6, which is 30 degrees, and we already know the sine of 30 should be equal to a half, that means that if you plug pi over 6 in place of all these x's, you should get about a half, which, which you do. So a test question could be, you know, what sine of 2 pi over 3 and use this formula or approximate it by using three terms of this formula. You just substitute 2 pi over 3 into each of these things and that will come the answer. Now the graph of y equals sine x looks like that. In radians this is 180 degrees which is pi 2 pi 0 minus pi minus 2 pi. If you instead graph sine x over x, what happens is that it still goes through the same points. It doesn't, doesn't go through 0 anymore because it's undefined at 0. But you still have, it looks a little like a sine curve, except it starts to like sort of shrink. Also, since when x is negative, it's going to flip this guy uh, upside down. So he's also going to go under first. Now, what's funny is that at zero, it's, uh, this one's undefined, but it ends up getting very close to one. So this is the graph of sine x over x. Now, to get an equation of a curve when you know the x-intercepts is not so hard. Imagine I give you something like this, so cubic, minus 2, 3, and 5. If you first guess, yeah, well, it's, it's x plus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 5. Those are, those at least will give you 0 when you plug in negative 2, 3, or 5. Um, there might be some sort of coefficient in front of here also to make it steep, to make it go through other points, but at least we can get it through the x-intercepts that way. Another way of doing this, which is not something that you'd be familiar with, but I hope I can convince you This, sorry, this is plus, this is minus. So look at this thing. This thing will also describe this curve somehow, because if you put negative 2 in, this guy becomes negative 1, that becomes 0. If I put 3 in, this becomes 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. If I put 5 in, that's a 5, uh, this becomes 1. So this also describes this curve. But this one is special because if I put 0 in, x equals 0, I get y equals 1. Because if I put 0 in, these become 0, it becomes 1. So if I want to get an equation for a curve where I know all the x-intercepts, and I know that it goes through 0, 1, this thing on the bottom is a way of doing that. Now let's look at this curve again. And let's say we really don't know anything about it except we don't know anything that it came from sine x over x or anything like that. It goes through 0, 1. 
it goes through pi 0 and 2 pi 0 and minus pi 0. We would say that this curve could be described as 1 minus uh, x over pi, 1 plus x over pi, 1 minus x over 2 pi, 1 plus x over 2 pi. That, that, that. So you should convince yourself that this does describe this, at least in that it goes through the right x-intercepts, x-intercepts and the right y-intercept. Well, Euler knows that sine x over x can also be described by taking that, that term from before with the x minus x cubed over 3 and dividing everything by x, so I get 1 minus x squared over 3 factorial plus x to the 4th over 5 factorial minus x to the 6th over 7 factorial going on. But we've also seen that the graph of that thing could also be written as 1 minus x over pi for this stuff. 1 minus x over, 1 plus x over pi, 1 minus x over 2 pi, going on. So if I multiply this guy out, it's going to become 1, it's going to be the x term. The, sorry, it's going to be 1, is going to be the constant term. There's going to be an x term also, which I could get by, um, I will show you. To get the x term, I have to pick one thing from each of these parentheses, and one's all the way down. So I'd get minus x over pi, and then I'd get plus x over pi, and minus x over 2 pi. And those things would all end up becoming 0. So we end up with no x term, which is not surprising because there's no x term in this guy either. But what will be relevant, and we can do a lot of different things here, but I'm just going to look at the very next term. The x squared term has a coefficient of negative 1 6 in this, in this uh, way of describing this curve. But what's the x squared term in this other way of describing the curve? Well, I can pick, oh, before I even do that, I notice I have a uh, difference of perfect squares thing going on these guys can be combined to be 1 minus x squared over pi squared and these next two become 1 minus x squared over 4 pi squared the next one become 1 minus x squared over 9 pi squared uh, again if I multiply this out I'll get 1 there's no x's anymore so I'm not going to get any x term but x squared term Um, one way to get that is to take this with 1's, so I get, uh, I won't factor it out yet, I get minus x squared over pi squared, then I, the next x squared term comes from picking this guy with 1's the rest of the way. The next one comes from picking this with all the rest of the 1's from the other one. If I factor out the x squared, I get 1 plus, x, 1 plus x squared minus 1 over pi squared minus 1 over 4 pi squared minus 1 over 9 pi squared. This coefficient should equal this coefficient because there are two ways of expressing the same thing. So now I can say that negative 1, 6, which is 1 over 3 factorial, is also equivalent to negative 1 over pi squared minus 1 over 4 pi squared minus 1 over 9 pi squared minus that the top. If I factor out minus 1 over pi squared, I'm left with 1 over 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 9 sum of the reciprocals equals negative 1, 6. Multiply both sides by negative one, pi squared over 1. And we end up with pi squared over 6 equals 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth, which is Euler's proof. 
interesting thing to do next as like a challenge question would be to find the x to the fourth term of this guy. That's going to happen by taking, for instance, these two guys with ones or by taking these two guys with ones and somehow comparing it to the 1 over 5 factor. That would be a pretty challenging question for another time.